All right, ladies and gents. Yeah, of course, ladies. There's ladies that like cars. Okay, we're back with an episode of the Bring a Trailer Showdown, Bat versus Bat. We're going to go ahead and do episode five. Why? Why not? Why are we asking questions? Because I'm a manic depressive. Obviously, I'm in the mode. We're zooming in. We're booming. We're zooming. We're getting it. We're getting these reps in. We're getting strong. And also, episode two just finally got loaded up to YouTube. I'm going to try to get ahead of the game a little bit if I still have issues with loading videos because of my slow home internet. And I want to have one or two banked ahead that maybe by the time they actually hit the net, you know, the cars may still be on auction. Like I said, it's the whole point of this thing. Try to drive a little bit of attention to these auctions. So let's go ahead and move on forward. We'll jump into episode five. Um, 630 auctions live now. It's 1030 p.m. Central Time, Sunday, November 20th. 2022. Let's try to find our stopping point from episode four. We went way ahead. I think we're two days out on that, so we'll try to do. Okay, so there's the starting point for episode four. You know, I'm getting sneak peeked at a lot. And we'll find the stopping point on episode four while the Bring a Trailer auctions are in a lull in between auctions ending. So it won't screw up the, the pairings because when the auction ends, it disappears off the page and the pairings just, they get dicked up. So let's go and I think that's, where do we end it? I already forgot. Yeah, we talked about those. We saw those. Saw those. Saw. That's where we ended. The Shelby and the Cyclone. All right, episode five, Bat versus Bat. If you haven't listened to any of the previous, shame on you. Shame, shame, shame. Go catch up. You'll learn a little bit. I'm learning a lot. And so what I do, um, I like to look at Bring a Trailer and pretend and just dream. So I got a lot of free time with my job being kind of slow. So my work day's done within pretty much half an hour. I've already got tomorrow's work already done. So Monday will be great. I'm going to be sitting at my desk for eight, nine hours bored out of my mind. So this is what I've been wanting to do for a while. We just we look at cars. We think about what we can buy. And we dream about whatever. And then we talk crap on them. And we talk about if they're cool, if we love them, if we hate them, or whatnot. So it's a fun thing for me and my friends. I'm making a podcast. I'll have guests on here eventually as I kind of learn how to do all that. Because I'm not, I'm not a techie guy. I can figure it out. I know enough to be dangerous, obviously. But so then what I try to do is guess. Try to guess what car has the biggest bid price on it. And there's some fun things out here. A lot of cool cars to see. So let's see. Let's find a good pairing. Not super interested in any of those. Okay, here we go. Ah oh, shoot. I went too far. We saw the money I did again. Darn it. I gotta quit doing that. Because I'm looking at the top of the screen, not realizing that I'm going too far on the bottom of the screen. So, on the left here is a 10,000 mile 1994 Pontiac Firebird Trans Am GT 25th anniversary. One of 2,000 built. Purchased by the seller in 2000. Good thing he's had it for a while. Okay, it's bright white over white leather. With a 5, 7 liter V8, 4 speed auto. How are you going to have an automatic Trans Am? That's not what they're made for. It's got the T-tops. Got to love them T-tops. And it's got white powder-coated rims. So white on white on white. I don't think that car is surely not woke enough. Because how is that car even allowed to exist these days? Against uh, BLM right there. Black, black, black. Black Jaguar. It is definitely the Wakanda car. Okay, XK8 convertible, 22,000 mile. Um, powered by 4.0 liter V8, 5 speed auto, black over cashmere leather. So that's not triple black. It does have a black soft top. Richmond, Connecticut. All right, you already seen the money on it. Oh, we lifted our skirts, no surprise. All right, so it's two days left on this auction 14 grand on the Trans Am, 9,100 on the Jag. 
who knows which one we end up ahead. I mean, honestly, the Trans Am is probably the better car. Worth more, got more collective collectability. Just got just more more intrigue for sure. It's not even close. Cat DeLorean. Hells yeah, against a Ferrari. Get in that time machine. It has 1700 mile 81 DeLorean DMC 12. DeLoreans don't look like they could be driven 1700 miles, so I'm glad that it made that. Okay, a Ferrari 458 Spider, 8,000 miles on that. I mean, yeah, if you had a Ferrari, you're going to drive that thing. Why, why are you just leaving it? Okay, so it was in Hawaii. That's probably the brand new Magnum PI car. 4.5 liter double overhead cam V8 7 speed clutch. And it's going to be the Ferrari. Just is. 215000 on that Ferrari right now. Auction ends in two days. Fifty grand for the DeLorean. That's a little better than I thought I'd bring. Cool. What we got here? 97 year old Van Winnebago camper against the Land Cruiser. Huh. The van. Against, where's the other doors? That's like a two door Land Cruiser. Okay, so let's look at them. Okay, no reserve. 97 Volkswagen. Euro van camper. White over gray. 28 liter VR6. Can't look at the interior because we'll see the bid on it. 89 Land Cruiser. LJ71 turbo diesel. There we go. Five speed. Right hand drive. Huh. Brought to the US. And acquired by the selling dealer in 2019. It's a truck. We call that a truck. It's not a truck. It's SUV. Okay. Um, two tone gray and beige, tin leather, 2.4 liter turbo diesel. Let's just see the money on it. Where, like I said, where, where's the other door? It's like a two door version. I don't think you've ever seen a two door right hand drive Land Cruiser. Sure, I don't know. I never have. 6500 bucks on the Land Cruiser, 9300 on the camper. Let's take a peek. Take a peek at that Volkswagen. I want to see the interior. It looks like a work van. Okay, your van converted to a pop top camper. Okay. Got sink, faucet, fridge, two burner stove, storage cabinets. Shit, people in LA want that. They'd be living in it. That's that's LA. It's the new way to live in LA in style. Okay, here we go. Pretty cramped. Of course, it's going to be. It's yeah, I don't really see much going on. Shit ton of paperwork. Looks like whoever had it before had already done a lot of work to it. So you may you may not be able to keep that thing out of the garage. If you become the mechanic's best friend. Alright, let's look at this Land Cruiser real quick. The two-door Land Cruiser. Or do they just have the door over the... Yeah. Right-hand drive. Yada, you already said that. 15-inch alloys. Got your cassette tape. Turbo wagon. Yeah, two-door, big old, big old window on the back there. Hate to have that busted out. Get your CD stolen. That's what happens when you go to Kansas City. Get all your CD stolen out of your, out of your uh, turbo wagon. England style cargo doors. Put a lot of groceries in that sucker. Okay, here's engine. 2.4 liter, yeah. Inline six. Tur uh, inline four. Sorry, I got ahead of myself there. I wasn't reading right. Damn. Neither of those are for me. Not to my jam. See what else we got? A couple convertibles here. 59 Austin Healey. BN6 Roadster against the 2008 Honda S2000 Roadster. 
Yeah, let's, let's take a little look at these. So, two suit notes here. Acquired by the Southern 2021. Refurb. Repaint the body. Completing a right hand drive conversion. Two nine liter inline six. Four speed manual. That's 2000. Those are pretty cool little, little roasters. Uh, some are going to like the S2000s. That's going to be decent, decent rides. 19,000 miles. Can't beat that. The Chicane Silver Metallic with the Black Leather, 2.2 liter VTEC, in line 4, 6 speed manual. Okay, here's the headlights for a spoiler, air conditioning, CD stereo, of course. Okay, put your bids in, boys. Which of these do you think is worth more? Man, I have no clue what a 59 Healy would bring, and how collectible it is, and how desirable it is. But it looks cool. It's like a silvery, like a bluish silver. It's a gray. Hmm. 19,000 mile. I think there's going to be some Honda fanboys. They're all about that 20,000 mile under S2000. Okay, let's look. 35 on the S2000 and 20,000 on the Austin Healey. Yep, yep. Hey, square body. Square body truck against the Benzo. It's not even the same class. It's not even close. Yep, 33 on the Ben, 7,000 on the C10, 77 Chevy C10. Got some cab lights on it. Skinny white walls. Yeah, that's like a $1,500 truck on Craigslist in the real world. Okay, let's see what we got going here. 2009 Benz ML63 AMG. That's what you put your wife in against a weed dealer's car. A 96 Chevy Impala SS. I'm pretty sure anyone that had one of those was definitely selling some weed as well. Let's take a look at them real quick here. Okay, the Benz Florida Car Dealers Acquisition 2022. Don't tell me you're a flipping flipper. 6.2 liter V8 in that? Jeez. Jeez. All wheel drive, 7 speed auto, white over black leather. Kind of makes me kind of want to drive it. I'm sure the gas mileage is probably pretty rough. 16,000 kilometers. So it seems from Canada. What's that actually mean for miles? It says, okay, less than 10,000 miles. Okay, it's Ontario. 5.7 liter LT1 V8. Four speed auto. Black over gray leather. It's going to be Benz. For sure. 17 and 250. For the bend, 6,600 on the Impala. Just running through these today. Okay, 69 Land Rover. It's just a 2001 Ferrari 456M. It's probably the ugliest Ferrari that they ever made. Beyond like the 1970s. This is so uninspired. Was that supposed to be like a mass produced Ferrari that they're trying to be, you know, centric not eccentric but centric you know middle of the road to appeal to to who to what new money double income no kids people that just gotta have a ferrari to have a ferrari but don't have any sense about the history of ferrari and what a ferrari really is what's well, okay i'm sure this ferrari is worth more because it's 69 land rover that looks like it's pretty beat up yeah, eighty thousand on the Ferrari, sixty-seven fifty, and then six thousand seven hundred fifty dollars on that sixty-nine Land Rover with no reserve. Let's look a little deeper in the Ferrari. Let's look at the comments. See if there's anyone that knows anything about these cars and some history of them. Okay, so it's a five-five liter V12, six-speed manual. Okay, nineteen-inch wheels, pop-up headlights. Yada yada yada, Daytona style front seat. Don't know what that's about. And a Ferrari brand stereo. I'm sure it doesn't work. Sold in New York. Time in Florida, Connecticut, Washington. This car's been all over the place. Been everywhere, man. Just like Johnny Cash. Been everywhere, man. Pininfarina design, aluminum composite, uh, body work. They don't tell me nothing. Side profile don't look that bad, but. It's just 
Oh, the de- okay. So the Daytona style seats are gonna be those ones with the ribs, like in the the back and the bottom, like the contrasting rib. Huh. I do like that gear shifter. Definitely. I mean, it's probably a fun car to actually drive. It just looks not like a Ferrari. Just don't look like the Ferrari's supposed to look. The interior does. It's like. 458 interior. Yep, front drive. I'm, I do like the F12s. So maybe, maybe the 456 is just ahead of its time. A little bit the 458, a little bit of the F12 components of the design, and the technology. Probably what it is. I'm just, I'm just BSing. I'm just guessing. Yeah. So let's look at the comments. See if anyone knows anything. Okay, sickest 456 you've seen. If that's the best 456 he's ever seen, how awful are the 456s if I think they're the worst Ferrari I've ever seen? Huh. The more you know, right? No wind noise when the wheels are up. Okay. Let's see with the early, not with that car. Yeah, tight. Definitely, definitely high quality. Okay, airbags had an issue. All the stickies and the carbon tank care of. Did find the hood latch still has sticky left on it. There are no sticky switches anywhere else. Don't know what the stickies mean. Gap of wind noise in front. That's guys. It scrolls to the bottom. Maybe that's non M four fifty six are only sold in narrow. A lot of fees. The wheels make the car. Yeah, does it look good? Yes, it does look like a 612. So Wheeler 25 says, amazing how it looks like a 612 in pick three. That would be the side profile that I said, eh, don't look too bad. Okay, repair guy says, these cars are notorious for sticky switches, knobs, vent rings, seat, back, latch, handles. Have all these parts been refinished? So I guess sticky means the switches just don't switch. Figure that out. Okay, Sultan of Brunei has got a million of these probably. Okay, let's see here. Okay, switch has been refinished in this 456. From message from the seller. Some bids. Okay. Let's move on. Let's get on with life. Okay. Mustang. Against the Bolt Jag. Eh. Hey. I love them. Oh, I love this. Like I said, I love the Civil Wars. When we get a paired up of, you know, of, of, of a manufacturer two from the same that may or may not be the exact same thing but close so 79 bronco xlt against a 1990 ford f-250 xlt lariat five speed rare and rare to find pickup trucks that are manual all right so the bronco 400 ci v8 four speed auto door range transfer k silver over black vinyl door range being too high four high and four low and four high Gray cloth upholstery. Again, little hard top, pro comp wheels, dual exhaust. It's all standard stuff you're gonna put on if you're a Bronco guy. It's yeah, silver. Ain't bad. Ain't bad. Then an F two fifty. Dark chestnut, metallic over chestnut cloth interior, seven point five liter V eight. Man, Ford's missing the boat by just reducing the engine size. Those Bring back the 7.3 diesel. Things are classic. Bring back the, the big old engines that produce a lot of torque. Produce a lot of power. Okay, dual fuel tanks. Yep, yep. Cruise control. Trailer brake controller. That's probably pretty advanced for 1990. And it's going to be the Bronco. I mean, that's the cool factor alone. It's, I mean, it doesn't have a lift on it, but it's got some big old... Good mud tires on there. 
Yeah, it's gonna be the Bronco for sure. Put your bid in, boys. Hurry up. Seventeen and two hundred fifty bucks. Seventeen thousand two fifty on that Bronco. Two days left on auction. Yeah, seven thousand for the F two fifty. Yeah, that's probably where those should be. That Bronco may end up closer to thirty five thousand. It'll be interesting to see where it ends up. I'll have to do Thanksgiving Day. Come back and we'll do like a weekend recap of episodes and see where these auctions ended up. Yeah, I think it's a good idea. Yeah, not so interested in those. Why is that one M fifty thousand dollars? So what we're looking at here is a two thousand three Mercedes Benz SL five hundred, and then a two thousand eleven BMW one M. Those are the little kooks. I mean, it looks nice. So it's got 25,000 miles. One of 983 cars delivered to North America during the model's single year production run. So BMW made them for one year. Like, oops, we messed up. No more of these. Weird. Weird, weird, weird. Why, why would you even make a car for just one year? Somebody, somebody tell us. Let's see if anyone knows anything in the comments. Got 11 comments on it, so probably not. Okay, let's go. Okay, no nav, manual seats, lots of that on goodies. Interesting build. AJ Boutros came out the box with a $50,000 bid. <laughs> and yeah, JT went from 20000 to fifty. And then JT CMB had that. So that escalated quickly. Yeah, sure did. Cold start video. Yeah, let's watch that. Sure, sounds nice. That's all we needed. It's all he gave us. See what else we got here. Hey, another bus truck. Never seen a bus truck in my life, and now two days in a row. I'll bring a trailer. There's two of them for sale. A 56 Volkswagen Transporter Type 2 against a 2022 Porsche 911 GT3. I mean, come on. Come on. Look at the difference in the size of wheels on those two cars. The, the 911 is probably like 19 inch rims. I would doubt 20s on a GT3. But. What size rims are on that transporter? Man, those don't even look. The wheel itself is bigger than the tire. Let's look at the prices. Two twenty-five, $225,000 in that Porsche. For sure. Almost $16,000 in that transporter. Does look good. It's a dove gray. Sorry, sorry. It's a dove blue over blue and gray upholstery. Man, that Porsche looks badass. I think it looks like it's a monster. Let's look a little closer at it. Let's dream a little dream here. Yeah, this looks sweet. Clean. Okay, it's got the chrono package and park assist. Front axle lift system. Four liter, flat six, seven speed, PDK dual clutch. It's a 992 GT3, 2100 miles. A clean Arkansas title. Where is this car at? Because I want to go look at it. It's in Darien, Wisconsin. The selling. Is, did some flipper take this to Wisconsin? This beautiful Arkansas car. Woo pig, go my Razorbacks. Whooping the dog out of me, Ole Miss this past Saturday. Just whooping the dog out of him. Rough, rough. Big dog. Eating. Okay, quick protective film on the body. I don't know if that's a good idea or not. But I mean, if it works, it works. But what happens when it starts getting chipped? It starts peeling and cracking. Okay, so it's got 20 inch front and 21 inch rear. 
I wonder if it looks so big because they're enormous for 9-11. Sweet car, 502 horsepower. Getting it. Just shitting and getting it. History in Ontario, Wisconsin, and Arkansas. Wonder who my boy down here in Arkansas that bought this thing. Let's look at the tongue. Okay. $911 bid, of course. He's a funny guy. Triple F metallic. 69, 75, and 225. Recycle 84 says, show me your money, boys. Show them or get out the door. Uh, 8-bit. Coop City says, smart money never moves in a transparent way. Interesting. I got to talk to Coop City. I bet we could have one heck of a convo. Coop City, you ever hear this? You ever see this podcast? You holler at me, boy. It's on a reassignment. Licensed dealer denied title in Wisconsin. Brunswick, blah, blah. Crazy. Car crazy blonde says nothing like triple black. <laughs> There's a joke in there that I'm not going to tell. Oh, my Lord. Let's look at that blue and gray upholstery in that transporter. The old bus truck. Feel like I'd be moving some gorillas. Not the kind you find in the zoo, but the kind with machine guns, machetes. Yeah. Yeah. Wonder if this one has a clean Arkansas title too. Oh, thunder. There needs some work there. That chassis needs a little touching up. All right. Let's see what else we got. I have another Bronco against Bronco. Let's do it. This is my jam. All right, so this 2022 Bronco Wild Track V6. A little bit different from the Everglades edition. I kind of like this one a little better. The Everglades edition had a bunch of just junk tacked onto it. And, like, I think it had a, had a snorkel. Sure, sure. All right, it's a 2.7 liter V6. So it's the bigger one. 10-speed auto. Glossy blue metallic, two tone black, sandstone leather. Against a 351 powered 74 Bronco. Got a little lift on it. A little, a little taller stance. It's another kind of muted color. It says a refinished green over black. Kind of similar to the other one we looked at. I like the wheels and on that. That looks really similar. 351 in Windsor, three speed auto. Little bar, seats, door panels, source from wherever. I can't read it. So we'll see the money. Um, That other, that Everglades version was like 61. The other older Bronco, the 71 Bronco, was like 50, I do remember. I, I bet there are 10,000 less from each of those. Of course, there's going to be two days left. Jeez, I was close. So 50 on the wild track, 46 on the 74. Huh. Let's see what else we got. Okay, here's some some roadsters. We don't even want to talk about replicas. We said replicas aren't worth my time. The Roush 27 powered back draft racing roadster. I just said replicas aren't worth my time and there's a Cobra replica that built up pretty dang strong. Against the Trans Am, an 89 Firebird Turbo Trans Am pace car. From what race? What race is it a pace car of? It's 1,555 20th anniversary pace car. Gotta be Indy. Let's zoom in a little bit. Official pace car. I can't read it. Sorry. Sorry, fellas. Hmm. Guess talk about oh, there you go. 36 to 33. I'm very surprised that these two cars are so close in the money. 
Like I said, there's two days left. Okay, Roush 427 V8. The five speed manual, Sterling Graves, Silver Stripes, Black Upholstery. Man, I would like that car. But it looks like it's a black and white photo, but it's not. See a little bit of blue there. And that, that's, that's kind of a cool car. Okay, 33 to 36. Blows my mind. What else we got over here? Okay. Rolls Royce against a BMW. 79 Rolls Royce. On my commute home, sometimes I see a guy around Springdale that daily drives a Rolls. And it's probably like one of these you know, late 70 models. Probably pick it up for a minute. Put a little money into it. Yeah, why, why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you roll around the Ozarks in a Rolls? Another cafe racer like those. Here's another Rolls. Manny Fresh's rolls. Any more yet? No one that soldiers? I don't think that's the same rap camp, but you kind of understand what I'm talking about there. Okay, 14,000 mile 2009 rolls. Phantom Drophead Coupe. Okay, it's a 72 Triumph Daytona. So that's probably like a $3,000 bike on auction. It's a $200,000 car on auction. Let's see where they're at. Okay, oh yeah, 109 and a half. For the rolls, two thousand for the motorcycle. Huh? Yeah, not even. A couple more cool little convertibles. So the eighty-eight Toyota truck against an Aston Martin. These aren't even comparable. I like them both. That'd be. I'd, I'd love to have like an old Datsun truck or a Suzu or Toyota like that. It's a four-wheel drive mini truck. Could just go anywhere. Tell you what, dude, like a 1980 Datsun pickup, like a pup truck, like a Suzu pup, four-wheel drive, those things, you can't get them stuck. They're so light, and they've got so much torque, and, the, you know, four-wheel drive, if you, as long as you got good tires on them, you couldn't get those kind of trucks stuck. And there's an Aston Martin Vantage 2010 model. I do love an Aston Martin. Sure do. Those four-door ones are like the best. I'm forgetting the name of the, the Rapide. 2012, 2013, Aston Rapide, black on, black on. No, chrome rims. That, That's my jam. Absolutely. Okay, see what else we got. Another 911 Targa. It's probably $200,000. It's a 360 Spider Modena. Okay, 235 on the Porsche. Another square body. What's up tonight with square body trucks? Let's take a look here. We got a 78 GMC C2500 Sierra Classic Camper Special with no camper. Where's the camper? That's suspect. Against a 97 Toyota 4Runner. Limited 4x4. Man, that was the frat boy dream. That was, you got to be a Cigna new son of a gun. That's that is a Sigma new truck if I've ever I can't call this a new truck. I just did my own thing that irritates me. Okay, let's look at so that's a ninety seven four runner. Three four liter five V Z F E V S got that's way too many letters for whatever it is you're trying to get a point across. Okay, Desert Doom Talica Rogue Leather. It's got the seventeen inch FJ wheels. Yeah, it's got some big old, big old meat to look out of place, but look, those tires look just a little too big for that truck. I bet it'll tear up that uh, transmission. Then a 78 GMC, three-quarter ton long bed. Purchased new by the owner's father. Cosmetic and mechanical refurb by B&T Custom Rod and Restoration. Got a Sparks, Nevada, around 2009. Two-tone blue and white over blue upholstery. Man, I hate that I hate that he's selling his dad's truck. I'm a sentimental guy. Things like that would mean a lot to me. But, you know, I don't know this lot in life. Why he's deciding to get rid of it now. I'm going to say... It's going to be the Sierra at a higher bid price. Yep, 11978 
and then three thousand on that four runner. Man, if you can get it in that four runner from twelve, do it. As long as it's not all beat up. Then tear. Let's see how. Let's see what kind of condition that four runner's in. Let my page go wreck. Let my niece go. I uh, shouldn't say her name. Let my niece go. Go wreck this one too. <laughs> Looking forward to giving her hell over Thanksgiving. We're wrecking. Okay, let's look for some interior shots. See if the seats are all jacked up. Well, the top parts are in good shape as they usually are, but it's the bottom part that we care about. That is some selective photographing. It for sure is. <laughs> okay, no accidents or damage. Registration history in Jersey, Maryland, Texas. Check and see. See the seat condition. Eh, not too bad. That's passenger side. Front passenger. Got a little bit of a rip there. Got a little bit of a scrape and scuff there. Eh, got some. Got some issues there. That's looking like the passenger seat too. Okay, driver's not. Eh, it's not too bad. Interior's not too bad of shape. I mean, it's twenty something years old. It's gonna be. Looks like it's been used. Now if it's... Uh, the back seat's been more rough. Don't want to put conditioner on them. Back seats are cracked. I mean, you got to take care of your leathers, boys. got to take... Just like your skin. Can't be rolling around with, you know, jacked and cracked skin. Ladies don't like that. I'm actually surprised the headliner wasn't dragging. Yep, there's your... Oh, it's got kickers in it. Damn right, Sigma Nu. You're damn right. Looks like it's got 312s. Nice little box. Hell yeah, thumps and bumps. You know it. You know it. Where's this thing located at? The Colony. So it's Dallas area. You better believe it. I'm surprised that... I'm surprised this truck hasn't made it to Fayetteville. With all the Texas kids that are coming to the University of Arkansas, I'm surprised I have not seen this forerunner in Fayetteville two weeks ago. Maybe next semester. <laughs> uh, not quite a square lot. 97 Sierra. Against a super square Mercedes. Okay, 600 sedan. I'm not feeling these. There's another Bronco. Love me some Broncos. Y'all know that. But it's a 93 Bronco XLT Oxford White over gray cloth. 5.0 liter. Yeah, FA Cruiser. Yeah. I feel like there's something more fun, more cool we can end this whole episode on. Just the pairings have not really been up to my my wishes. Okay, here's a 98. Carrera, 911 Carrera against a modified Cummins engine with a stand. Now that engine stand's cool as hell. I like those rims on that stand. Those are like UTV wheels. 10,000 for that engine. That stand. Here we go. So we'll end it here. A 62 Amphicar model 770 against a 29 year old GTO hardtop. Is that the judge or is that the goat? I don't remember. I'm always confused on which which is which. All right, so a 62 Amphicar model and a sweet little like seafoam green. Got the white walls on it, white interior. Got the American flag in the back. Heck yeah, the big old fins. That's a cool car. It almost looks like a toy. It honestly looks like a toy. Finishing Fjord Green. White and green upholstery, 1147cc, 11, Triumph, inline four. A two part manual. Delivering four speeds, reverse on land and forward and reverse on water. Refurbed under prior ownership. Then we got the 67 GTO. Acquired by the seller's mom in 1993. Man, quit selling your parents' cars. Hold on to those things. I mean, it looks like you got the garage space back there, the big old shop. Got a couple, got a couple other cars out in the boonies. 
I'm curious what this guy lives because it looks pretty similar to this. <laughs> looks pretty similar to my world. That's uh, okay. Subsequent work rebuilding the engine. Blue over black vinyl. 400 V8 with a Muncie 4 speed manual. A 12 bolt rear axle. Her shifter. And they're both cool. They sure are. But that Amphicar has got to be more of a collector item. It's got to be worth more. Let's go ahead, guys. Last one of the day. Put your bid in. $100,000 on that Amphicar. Wow. Then $20,250 on the GTO. And if you get, get that GTO for like twenty five, dollars cool. I bet the dude's got it on reserve for like thirty five or forty. I don't know you, man. I'm not going to trash talk you. But if you want to talk about the car and talk about your mom, I'd love to hear about your mom. You know, I lost mine when I was 19. I miss her every day. It's one thing. I, I, I want to hear about people's moms. Not know kind of what they are, but I want to hear about who they are. I want to hear about your relationship with her. How she, you know, that's how she treats the world. What she taught you, how she brought you up, brought you in. You know, because I missed out on that. Thank God I had my grandma. Grandmas are special people. Okay, let's look. What was I want to look at for that GTO? There's something about that GTO that I wanted to look a little deeper at. Oh, yeah, where it's from. Afton, Virginia. Man, it's God country. Good living, good people in that part of Virginia. Absolutely. It's a good looking car. Hate that you're selling it. If you could, I would say keep it. Keep it in the family. Looks like you got some land and some space out there. But you might have too many projects. Like it's like I said the other guy. Maybe your wife's got your balls in a vice. But I hate that you're getting rid of it. That's a good looking GTO. It really is. All right. That's episode five in the can. Um, I'm going to try to get these things uploaded when I get to the office tomorrow where I've got some good internet. And, you know, I think it feels like we're, we're leaving on a whimper here. You know, these, there's some cool cars on this. But one thing before we leave, let's scroll through real quick, see what other cars are coming off an auction. I'll leave it here. There's a 74 Porsche 911 against a race car. I don't know what ROW means. I know what RUF and roof. I know what that means, but I don't know what ROW means for Porsches. I've seen it a couple times on here. Somebody smart me up. Let's see what else is going off on. Okay, so we're three days out. I'll save that for more episodes. Um, yeah, there's a 57 Ford Fairlane. Maybe episode six. We'll start off on this here. An 85 911 Carrera. I don't see the whale tail. And then the Ford Fairlane. One of my best buddies, his favorite movie is Ford Fairlane. He would love to have that car. That would be his dream ride. But that's it. Episode 5, 5.30 in the morning. Tomorrow's going to come early. I'm hitting the sack. Calling it a day. Hitting the rack. I'm going to scroll up just to give you guys a conniption as we lead off here. So I just want to see how many are going off on auction tomorrow. So 6.30 to live. You know what? Who cares? We're out.